Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group. It is April 16th, 2020. It is virtual high five day. Well, it's actually national high five day, but uh, with social distancing, everything else, let's make it virtual high five day. It's also national wear your pajamas to work day. Uh, that's right, every April 16th, you're supposed to wear your pajamas to work. This year, you actually can, because uh, as most of the world, you're working from home and probably are in your pajamas waist down. Uh, moving into the technology, there are two zero-day exploits that uh, have not yet been patched for Zoom that are currently being sold in the dark web for $500,000. So if you have an extra $500,000 around and you want uh, the secret access to two Zoom exploits, uh, it's going to cost you that $500,000. Um, the person that discovered the exploits is calling it perfect for industrial espionage. Um, so the thing with zero days is, you know, once it starts to be used, the zero day is going to be discovered. Uh, and it usually doesn't take too, too long. So I don't know what the $500,000 is really going to buy it, but I am sure there are people out there that have purchased it and are going through and starting to look at ways of it, utilizing it for exploits. Zoom has also recently updated its system, uh, so you probably have seen a patch come in across uh, your Zoom. Uh, some of the changes and you know some of the security enhancements is you know passwords, uh, meeting and webinars. Account owners and admins can now configure minimum meeting password requirements uh, to adjust that minimum length and require letters, numbers, special characters, or allow just numeric passwords. If you're on a free basic account, you only have the alphanumeric option by default. Uh, you also get random meeting IDs. Um, random meeting IDs are now 11 digits instead of nine. Uh, your personal meeting ID will remain the same as it was. Uh, cloud recordings are now password protected by default. Um, you may remember from a previous episode where I talked that uh, your Zoom meeting recordings pretty much all have the same name. So people were searching and locating these Zoom recordings and actually posting them publicly on sites like YouTube. Uh, so now all cloud recordings moving forward will have password protection on by default. Third party file sharing is once again enabled. It was disabled as a security audit was done, uh, but you can now once again use Box, Dropbox, OneDrive to share files across Zoom. Uh, Zoom chat message preview uh, can hide message preview for desktop chat notifications. If it's turned off, you simply be alerted that you have a new message without displaying the content. The other update that I wanna mention that's not in this uh, update, but it was in a previous update is a lot of the screenshots that you see for Zoom uh, included you know, the whole window. And on the very top of that window in the toolbar is where your meeting ID typically was. Uh, they've changed that and they've removed your meeting ID from that because so many people were taking you know, those virtual screenshots and sharing images of their meetings that that is really one of the main causes of Zoom bombing. Uh, so it really wasn't a security issue that was causing... <coughs> excuse me, that was causing a lot of the Zoom bombing. It was more so user sharing that they were on a, you know, their Zoom and this is their Zoom ID. Um, and, you know, people knowing what was going on. Uh, so that's Zoom. The next thing that I want to bring up, um, uh, IT company based in Illinois, Application Software Technology LLC or AST. Uh, they have offices, uh, they're headquartered in Illinois, but they're also Texas, Canada, and Indiana. Uh, on or about March 9th, an unknown third party accessed employee payroll information after having gained access to employee's email address. The third party was able to set up rules in the employee's email that diverted the employee's email messages to a third party. So this is a data breach notification. Uh, this is from the California Department of Justice, uh, the OAG uh, out in California, as probably part of the CCPA notification requirements of a breach. So here's what happens, and it happens more often than you think. So you get a phishing email. Um, you don't think anything about it. Your user clicks on it. They you know, give their username and password to their email environment, and nothing changes. Nothing happens. Everything looks normal. Uh, it's just whatever file didn't work. Uh, and often this goes unreported because it's unknown, and in some of these cases, 
what it's actually doing is it captures your username and password. Then it redirects you to the actual Office 365 page where if you type your username and password in again, it lets you log in. And to the user, oh, I just typed it in wrong. Um, but in reality, you just gave your username and password up via phishing email. So what they do is they get into your email environment and this is all pre-scripted on the back end. They log into your email environment and without doing anything, without sending any emails, without you know putting ransomware into your email environment or anything like that, they're just going in and creating a mailbox forwarder. And there's certain keywords that it's looking for. It's looking for accounts payable, accounts receivable. It's looking for payroll. It's looking for information that contains a lot of PII that would be valuable if it left your environment. So in this situation, AST, um, an employee went through the phishing email, gave their username and password, had a mailbox forwarder set up, and employee W2 files that were being sent to this mailbox were being diverted to this third party. Um, so that's a lot of PII that's now being sent out. Um, so AST puts out this disclaimer. Um, you can read the full thing at oag.ca.gov uh, under their, you know, the California breach notifications. But IT companies, we have to step up our game. We have to make sure we are protecting our house. We have to make sure that we're showing strength in protecting our house. Because if we can't protect you know, our internal network, if we can't train our employees right on cybersecurity, then how are our customers going to trust us? How are they going to know that you're taking the right safeguards and putting the right services and tools in place for them to protect their house if you can't protect your own? So it is critical and we've seen it in other situations um, where MSPs, you know, get a breach. Um, I've seen cases where ransomware is actually deployed out via uh, their remote monitoring and management tool uh, to all the clients. So all the clients are getting delivered ransomware by a hacker that got into, you know, that tool set that allows your IT company to help manage your environment. Um, businesses, you have to know that your IT company is protecting themselves. Simple questions, you know, ask them, you know, are you using the same tools that you're deploying at our network? How sure are you of this? Um, there's actually a list of questions that you can ask. It's part of different compliance requirements where it requires your vendors to answer questions. Uh, so if you're looking for some information on how to ensure your vendors are doing things right, reach out to me, scott at techwisegroup.com. I'd be more than happy to share that with you. On the other side of the pond, uh, GDPR uh, over in Europe, regulators are starting to get tough. Uh, since May of 2018, when GDPR went into effect, there's been over 160,000 breach notifications. Now, if you follow my daily videos, you know every day there's breaches that are happening. Every day there are security flaws, breaches, just it's happening every day. It could be millions, it could be here, it could be there, it could be whatever. Uh, here, AST obviously is just one example, um, but it's happening and it's happening a lot more frequently than it should be. So GDPR regulators are starting to get tough. And what that means is their fines are gonna start going up. So the auditors that are going out to the site after a breach occurs, they're going to be looking more strict and the fine costs are going to go up. And it's not just GDPR that you have to worry about as a business owner, it's also CCPA if you're doing business in California, New York you know, Shield Act if you're doing business in New York, Massachusetts Data Security if you're doing business in Massachusetts, you have the Washington DC legislation that I talked about a couple of days ago. Um, states and industry compliances like HIPAA, PCI, DSS are also getting more strict and following these guidelines. You also see the cyber insurance policies are starting to look at industry standards and in determining what your premium is going to be. So expect to spend more on security if you're not doing the basic things to protect your environment. And it needs to start with end user employee education. If you're not taking the time to train your end users on a regular basis on cybersecurity, you're immediately not doing enough to protect your environment. It's plain and simple. Your end user is your weakest link. 
Um, I can say that till I'm blue in the face. Um, continuing into kind of ransomware, um, the uh, Nemty ransomware gang, if I want to call them a gang, um, runs, you know, one of the most popular ransomware as a service um, features out there in the dark web. Ransomware as a service is a group of people get together and say, I want to push ransomware, but they don't want to code it. They hire, you know, this group and they run ransomware as a service. Uh, all the money that you get in, you keep 70%. The, you know, the gang has taken the 30% cut. They are one of the most known because they were completely public on the dark web of what they were doing. Well, they've now gone kind of offline or into the darker portions of the dark web. Uh, they are no longer doing this public ransomware as a service, but they are completely moving it into a private type of area. Um, and it's not good, but as we all know, ransomware phishing emails, they are advancing sometimes faster than your technology can keep up. So it is critical to keep your infrastructure up to date, your end user education up to date, uh, and just make sure that you're checking the right boxes when it comes to your cybersecurity kind of uh, direction for your organization. And like I said earlier, if you're not sure what that looks like, or if you need some advice, reach out to me, scott at techwisegroup.com. The last thing I wanna go over today is probably something that you've seen a lot, but this. <coughs> this looks probably familiar to a lot of you. Um, it is, you know, a survey. Um, it's one of those Facebook surveys, you know, where are you from? What's your favorite color? What's your pet's name? Well, these are security questions. Um, you have, you know, typically two or three questions that are your safeguards that if you forget your password that you can log into your account. Well, by answering these surveys, by answering these questionnaires on Facebook, on social media, whatever it is, you're actually building out what your profile is. Um, and the profile is a big picture of, you know, all the different pieces of your online profile um, and the information that is you. So the more information that you make publicly available or available just to your friends, uh, the more information about you that's out there open and public you know what is the street you grew up on what's your favorite restaurant you know what's your first job you know what's your favorite food um you know your mother's maiden name you know not all these are things that you see commonly for security questions but they're the common things that you think about of oh, if i ever get my password i'm going to use my mom's maiden name because it's such a generic one and really people can find that out and a lot of hacks that occur, you know, in good services aren't that they're breaking security encryption. It's that they know what your security answers are and they're just correctly identifying it. So just do everyone a favor. I understand it's great to share information with your family, your friends, but stop filling out these surveys. Stop filling out these questionnaires. Um, just think about what you're posting before you're posting it online. I think it's self-explanatory, but unfortunately every day I can go through Facebook, you know, spend a couple minutes and I can see a number of these surveys, questionnaires in different forms, in different ways, just sitting there waiting for that, you know, hacker to capture and start building your profile and then eventually breach your system. So that's it for today. Again, it is April 16th, 2020. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please, please let me know. Either comment right on this article or shoot me an email, scott at techwisegroup.com. Thank you, everybody.